بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Points of benefit regarding invoking Allah which is known as dua invocation <coughs> The uh, greatest scholar Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Saadi rahimahullah asserted that the one who invokes Allah seeking something or asking him to ward something off that he fears he should not have his intention limited to this objective of seeking or warding rather he should have his intention be getting closer to Allah or nearer to Allah by invocation since invocation is a worship so whoever his intention in dua is to get closer to Allah then this is more perfect much more perfect than the one who limits his intention for that which he seeks or to seeks to gain or to ward off something he dislikes he said the situation with most of people is restricted their intention being only to seek what they want and to ward off what they dislike or they fear this is deficiency and deprivation and loss of the great merit of invoking Allah having the greatest intention getting closer to him and drawing nearer to him so this is a very important benefit which is overlooked by by most people when they invoke Allah they focus on the matter they seek either to gain or to be warded off and they forget about the issue of getting or drawing nearer to Allah closer to him because dua invocation is worship and Allah loves to be invoked and Allah loves for people for the creation to invoke him and ask him the <clears throat> there are conditions the second point of benefit there are conditions for the dua to be answered there are conditions for the dua for the invocation to be answered by Allah these conditions are to be met and they are first responding to Allah's demand of compliance with his commands and staying away from his prohibitions listen to what Allah says in this respect in chapter 2 verse 186 وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون and when my slaves ask you concerning me then answer them I am indeed nearer to them 
I respond to the invocations of the supplicant when he calls on me without any mediator or intercessor. So let them obey me and believe in me. This is the condition. So that they may be led aright. So the one who does not obey and submit to Allah, then he will deprive himself from Allah answering his supplication. Because sins and disobedient acts stand as a barrier between the slave and Allah's answering of his invocation. Some of the righteous predecessors, as Salaf, as Salih said, do not say the answer is delayed when you blocked its road or its path by sins. The second condition The invocation must be by supplicating Allah alone. قال الله تعالى in Surah Al-Jinn verse 18 72 verse 18 وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعوا مع الله أحدا وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعوا مع الله أحدا and the mosques are for Allah alone so invoke not anyone along with Allah and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said إذا سألت فاسأل الله if you ask, ask Allah alone وإذا استعنت فاستعن بالله and if you seek help and aid then seek it from Allah alone. The third condition is the presence of the heart while invoking, while supplicating. The presence of the heart. So one's heart should be present, understanding what he says, contemplating the greatness of the one whom he is invoking. And it's not befitting for the one who humbles himself to Allah and submits to Him to address Allah by words which he does not understand and does not contemplate their meanings. And in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah wa'alamu and know that Allah does not answer the dua from a heedless heart. The fourth condition is not to hasten in the dua, not to hasten in the dua, because the supplicator might invoke Allah and the response might be delayed due to a wisdom known to Allah. So shaitan, Satan may take this opportunity and whispers to the person to leave the invocation 
and thus despair. And in the hadith and the narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, the one of you will be answered as long as he does not hasten and say, I have invoked, but there was no answer. I was not answered. My request was not answered. And thus leaves the dua, abandon the invocation. And here the person must know that since the dua is ibadah, is worship, and if he makes more dua, then he is on a great good, whether he sees the response or sees a delay in it. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he answers the invocation, either he gives what the person asked for, or gives something or delays that to the hereafter, or words of something evil, equivalent to that which he asked, but from an evil. So the person does not know really where is the good. And that's why he must keep and have full trust in Allah. And this is the content which distinguishes the believer. The fifth condition is to have his food, his drinks, his clothing, lawful, of lawful ways, of lawful means, earned in lawful ways. A person, as the Prophet ﷺ, on a lengthy journey, uncombed, his hair unkempt, disheveled, raises his hands towards the sky and says, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, O oh my Lord, O oh my Lord, while his food is haram, is unlawful, his drink is haram, his clothing is haram, nourished by haram, by haram, unlawful, and it's impossible that he will be responded to. The sixth condition is the dua must be in matters that are good, in good matters. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the person will be answered as long as he does not invoke something that is sin or severing of kinship severing the ties of kinship. The seventh condition is having good opinion in Allah. Having good opinion in Allah.
So having a good opinion in Allah is the seventh condition. The Prophet ﷺ said, Let not one of you die except that he has good opinion in Allah. Except that he has good opinion in Allah. And also he, the Prophet وسلم, said, Invoke Allah while you are certain in his response. There are two exceptions to this situation. When conditions are not met, there are exceptions where if the conditions are not met, there can be an answer. And this includes number one, the invocation of the one in dire need even if he is a mushrik even if he if the person is a disbeliever an unbeliever so how about if he is a muslim and a believer qala allah ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high says in Surah An-Naml 27 62 إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء And the one who is in need, like for example, the one who is ill, or poor, or afflicted by a calamity. The second is the invocation of, the second is the invocation of one who is oppressed, or unjustly, dealt with injustice done to him because the Prophet ﷺ said beware of the invocation of the oppressed فَإِنَّ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حجاب. there is no veil between it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And he, the Prophet وسلم, said, okay. 
دعاء المظلوم دعوة المظلوم مستجابة the answer to the invocation of the oppressed one is answered even though he may be a disobedient sinner because his sin is upon himself so the invocation of the oppressed against the oppressor the one who did unjustly to him who had done him injustice is answered so the, peer, the person must be aware of this this brings the conditions concerning the answering of the invocation to conclusion we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who ascribe and fulfill these conditions in the way that pleases Allah the Most High Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu alayhi wa